On this episode of Carnage, we've got 99 problems and this intake is one of them. So I think it's clear to everyone that uh, our big Holly High Ram intake is not going to fit under a standard bonnet. And to be honest, we don't want to run this big elephant trunk type arrangement, you know, sticking through the bonnet. While it look cool, it's not a sleeper thing, you know, and we are trying to build this car as a bit of a sleeper, you know, Toyota V8 into a Toyota body. It's going to look standard on the outside. You go out to a car shape, pop the bonnet, and it's going to look awesome, you know, having this 1UZ under there with a the turbo and all the piping and stuff. It'll look fantastic. But that ain't going to work. I was talking to Al from Skid Factory on the weekend and he mentioned that they do a side feed setup for like Mustangs in the States where they take sort of this part of the manifold and it's cast here on the side. It does come out a fair way. I do think it's going to still be a problem if we go that way. But let's whack a tape measure over it and see if it's going to fit. Okay, so we've got uh, 63 mil from that flange, that face, to the bottom of this. I need 125, which is up here. And I just don't think we can make that happen. Like, even assuming there's a curve in the bonnet that, uh, that may give us an inch, let's say two inches that plus two inches gets us to what 110 115 maybe I still need 10 mil but we could put a slight bulge in the bonnet wouldn't need a full reverse cow just need a bulge mm. yeah it's one of those things you know do I we really need to put the bonnet on and do a, a measurement like some plasticine and see where that gets us. Maybe we'll do that. Hmm. But right now, I, I just don't see it, but it all depends on how much curvature there is in that bonnet. Yeah, you can never draw a straight line straight across the guards and go, yep, it's not gonna fit. If it does, you know, like right now, if that was the height, that's fine, isn't it? So, but the bonnet always goes like that. As you can see here, there's a curvature there. Anyway. <sighs> Screw it, let's do it now. Let's have a look. fun at work. Oh, baby. Let's see if it fits. Ah! Oops. A few moments later. Say... 100 mils we need another inch but the padding's still there it's not an inch thick but i tell you what this is going to end up very close very close so i've just been on the holly website just checking out that side mount high ram top getting all the measurements. We know it's five inches from that flange to the top, but it's also five and a half inches from this edge here to the edge of where the throttle body goes. And I think that causes another problem. So as much as I'd like to use that high ram top, it looks beautiful, even with the side mount, it looks fantastic. I just don't know that it's gonna work because it's gonna 
put our throttle body, like the bottom of our throttle body there. So then this becomes a problem again. <sighs> but it looks awesome. And while, yeah, we could probably flip it around and point it out that side, then we're going to have issues with all our intercooler piping. You know, we're going to have our turbo over there. The beauty of it was going to be turbo out into the intercooler, then out this side of the intercooler up into the throttle body. That would work really well. Now, if we put it all over that side, then it complicates all the pipe work even more. And, it, you know, it's going to cost us a fair bit. This, Part's going to cost us 700 bucks landed. You know, I want it to be right, and we know that the bonnet clearance probably isn't going to be right either. So I think we take this off. And put our Toyota intake back on. Oops. Like that. It doesn't look as nice though, does it? I mean, it's great, it says Toyota on the top, you know, so um, yeah, when we pop the bonnet at car shows, people will be like, oh, a Toyota V8 in a Toyota car, that's great. But it just doesn't look as sexy as that Holly top. It gives us a lot more room for throttle bodies though and activities, so that'll work. And we seen plenty of people make good power with these manifold tops anyway so I think we'll just have to go with that but there is another problem not related to the manifold we just noticed and that is back to this cam cover coil fits there coil fits there coil fits there but coil does not fit there because of the booster bugger So we're going to have to yank the motor again at some point and probably go to the VS booster which everyone tells me is smaller than this VR style steel booster so we'll have to go to the VS plastic booster which apparently sits a little bit further back and is a bit smaller. Would that have cleared the cam cover? Don't know. We've already clearanced that so it's not going to be an issue but we need the clearance for our coil now because uh, without that, yeah. We can't run on seven coils, we need all eight. But. Fourth one ain't gonna fit. But that's not our only clearance issue. So not only are we having problems with intake, which we can solve, coils, which we can solve, it's going to be painful. Uh, but we also have some issues with our exhaust manifolds, not with them hitting the body, but with them hitting accessories. Remember how last episode, I think it was, that we showed you our new V-bands on the front of the exhaust manifolds? Well, the one on this side, yeah, it's going to be a problem and I'll show you where the problem is. On this side of the engine, we have two things that have to go on, the alternator and the power steering, and they're both hitting that exhaust flange. I'll show you the alternator first. So this goes up in here, slides on that stud there, with the bolt in the bottom. So obviously that is a problem. But the even bigger problem is the power steering pump. Oh, this thing is gross. All right, that slides on there like so. Now I'll add the alternator. And you can see it gets very busy up in there.
Now the power steering we could probably do without, but we won't. Um, you know, in a pinch we could do without it. However, we're gonna leave it in there. We'll clean it up, obviously. But the alternator we definitely need. And to clear both of them, I think we're gonna have to do like a hard 90 out of the front of our turbo manifold sort of cut it back a bit go hard 90 down and then bring it in down under the alternator fun and of course for any of this to happen the engine has to come out again Now that we've got the engine out, a couple of things have to happen. We have to modify our exhaust manifold. Now we know that is the as far forward as we can come. So we're gonna to have to come out of our manifold and sort of cut that off and maybe even cut it off really short and either come like hard 90 there or even come out the bottom here and seal off the front. That's gonna take some thought. I'll talk to some people about that. But I also have to take our brake booster out. I know a few of you have been saying, just use a VS plastic booster, they're skinny and blah, blah, blah. And I guess we're gonna to have to do that because yeah, we need to get a coil in that last cylinder. So I'm gonna to to remove this whole booster and master cylinder unit, go down the wreckers and get a VS unit and see how that goes. Maybe we didn't need to change the cam cover at all. Who knows? But Whatever we have to do, we'll do it. So I don't know if this is the same master cylinder on the VS as it is on the VR style that this car is. Uh, we'll roll the dice. We'll disconnect the master cylinder from the front of the booster with the lines intact. And if the chips fall our way, then maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we can just move the whole master cylinder, lines and everything. Or maybe we just gotta get a whole different master cylinder. I don't know. I don't know. I think I'm gonna to have to pop this driver's seat just so I can get up under the dash. Scotty ain't a teenager anymore. So instead of removing the seat, Matt took pity on me and climbed up under the dash and loosened off all the booster stuff. And there we have it. Huh, there's only two bolts. Hmm. Oh well. Let's go down the wreckers and see if we can find a VS one and see how that goes. Well, I'm back from the wreckers, much colder, much damper, and unsuccessful. Every VS Commodore down there was missing its booster and master cylinder. So it must be a bit of a thing. <sighs> All right, we'll have to go to the net and see what we can find. So obviously we couldn't find a booster down at the wreckers, so I put a call out to the good people at the Dandenong Mechanics Institute, and they found this for me. So, VS Slimline Plastic Booster. We'll slot it in there. Yes, the other master cylinder's still in spot at the moment. Um, fit that. Hook it in the hole. Get it in the hole. There we go. It's in. All right. So that's where that's going to sit. Ignore that for the moment. That's kind of just, I don't want to have brake fluid everywhere just yet. But I figure, let's sit the engine back in and see how that sits with our rocker cover, with our coil hole. 
maybe this will work because that is much thinner, seems to sit further back. Yeah, maybe this will work. Let's drop it in. So that gives us an answer. It's not a good answer, but it's an answer. And that is the Slimline VS Booster does not fit either. In fact, in terms of clearance with the rocket cover, it's worse. And the coil still does not fit in the hole and will not fit with that booster. Which means we may need to go to plan C. And it's not really where I wanted to go. Plan C is unboosted with just the master cylinder. And they make kits for that, but it's not really where I wanted to go. But maybe it's where we have to go. Fuck. It's a new day in the carnage workshop and it is freezing cold in here, I've got to say. But if you look closely, you can see I have been busy. I have mounted our coils to our cam covers and um, I'll talk about them a little bit in that uh, we've gone with this angled style on the coils. Now I originally made a set that positioned all the coils in line, except uh, yeah, that put them all very close together and it looked like the wiring you know, was going to be a problem between the coils. It wasn't super tight, but it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of room to play with. So I decided to go with this style, angled them all. It took a little bit more work. I had to do it a couple times to get it right, but it's done now. It's right. There are three different styles. There's eight different pieces, but three different styles. So the rear coils on each side, as you know, those six are all use the same piece just made six times. Then this one is different to this one at the front. But I think it looks good. I'm very happy with the result. And that's the way it's gonna be. I think we've decided we're gonna stick with the factory Toyota top for our engine for the time being. And to make that easier, we're gonna put this 70 mil Proflow flange on the manifold, so we'll get that welded to there and then we're going to run a 70 mil throttle body also from Proflow. Now a few people might say 70 mil that's not big enough you know everyone seems to like to run you know 105s and 102s and all these other big sizes but the hole here in the manifold is only 70 mil so we'll put a 70 mil flange 70 mil throttle body which is nice and compact it can go there, that'll give us room to do our pipe work off to our intercooler. And 70 mil will flow plenty because on the trial bow, we've got a 67 mil throttle body and that thing makes 660 horsepower at the tires. So 70 mil will be fine. It'll take a uh, standard style TPS. We'll uh, work out what we're gonna do about idle control, but still, that should work just fine. All right, we'll get that welded to that in the next day or two. What else do we need to talk about? Ah, fuel system. The moment has finally come for us to mount our pumps in our surge pot because we have the right submersible hose now from ProFlow. The 516th stuff. Rather than the we had before. I've even done a trial fit of one of the pumps in the hangar to see how long we need to make our little hose. The distance is 50 mil if you're wondering. Um, to get these pumps in the hangar you've got to basically spray the pump with silicon spray, spray the inside the hangar with sil silicon spray, push it on up there uh, I did that with this one and now it's not going anywhere so I'm going to have to sort of unscrew the bottom of the carrier so I can get our little 50mm hose up on there but, uh, but yeah, 
this should go pretty simple from here on in. So let's make it happen. So they will go in like so. Cool. All right, we've got our pumps in, now some wiring. Now we've got our pumps in our hangar, all wired up. It's ready to just drop in the surge pot. And we can seal it up. Right, so the surge pot is done. We need to install that. We also need to run a bunch of lines. But before we do that, we need to put the old fuel tank back in the car and we figure it's probably a good idea to replace the fuel pump in that old tank so we've got one on order so you're going to see all that on a future episode of carnage <laughs> 